This video has been made to be used in two different ways. You can either play the whole video through, or if it's better for you, you can just choose one or two slides as the focus of a lesson. So please use the video in the way that suits your purposes best. What is critiquing? So critiquing is giving your opinion and giving your evidence for that opinion. So you evaluate a text and you share your criteria. Why do you like it? Why do you think this is text is entertaining? Why do you think this writer writes so well or so poorly? So when you're critiquing, the word because appears a lot um, because you're always sharing your reason for liking something or disliking something. So, you know, I really like this story because. I really like this author's writing because. I really like this design and layout because. Or you might say why you dislike something. This is also critiquing. I dislike this argument because the ideas aren't logical and well sequenced and there's no real evidence. I disliked the first chapter of the novel because I can't visualise the setting and the main characters aren't rounded. They are stereotypes. So when we critique a text, we look first at three aspects of a text to critique it. We, we look at the ideas in the text. If it's a story, we, we try and critique whether we find the plot interesting. Do we find the characters engaging? Do we find the setting intriguing? And do we find the themes important? If we're looking at a factual text, we are interested in whether the ideas, the main ideas are clear, whether there are significant issues that are being written about and, and are the impacts of the issues explained clearly. Does this text have fascinating facts? Does it have convincing reasons? Is there a logical sequence of ideas or arguments? Is there supporting detail? So, we think first about the ideas. Secondly, we have a really good opinion about the quality of the layout and design. We think about the quality of the illustrations, the photographs, the diagrams and so on. We express an opinion. And, and lastly, we look at the language of the author and we give our opinion on whether the author's style hooks us in. We explain the techniques that we enjoy the best and we say why. Now, when we critique nonfiction texts, we really want to give an opinion about whether the text is reliable and whether it has been written by an expert. So there are three criteria that we consider. We give our opinion on whether the author is an expert. So we, we need to know whether that's been listed. Um, we take a look for references. Does the text list where it got all its information from? All the books and websites that, that the author used, have they been listed? And then we look carefully at whether the information is up to date or not. And so if a nonfiction text has all these three things, an expert author, references and up to date information, we can say that it, it's likely to be a reliable information text. It has authority. But the thing is that some factual books and websites are not reliable. The author is pretending to be neutral and pretending just to talk about facts, but actually the author has a strong opinion. So we can check websites to see, does this author of this website use opinion language? We have to check the about section of websites to find the expertise and the backgrounds of the contributors. I really do urge you to look at the about section of, of all websites. And if the website does not have an about section, it's quite possible that it's not an expert website. Who funds this website? Who's giving the money? What is the purpose of the website? And does it list its information sources? And it's really important to consider whether the information on the website is fake, because unfortunately, 
not just websites, but quite a few places nowadays are putting out fake news, which is invented. So how do we spot fake news? We've talked here uh, earlier about checking whether it has an about page. We've got to make sure to read beyond the headline because sometimes the headline has been written to hook us in, but actually you keep reading and you realise that it, the information isn't accurate. Check the author. Check the supporting sources. Check the date. Try and work out whether the information is even just a joke. Work out your own views and your own opinions. See whether you're coming at the topic in an unbiased way. And I really recommend fact checking. If you've got any doubts at all about the information, try to find a fact checking website. So there are two fact checking websites that are really good. Snopes does a lot of um, checking for fake news related to America. And Hoax Slayer is an Australian um, fact checking website. So if you're thinking that this just might not be true, have a look at a fact checking website and see whether actually it's fake news. Now, when we read a biography of a famous person, we're going to give our opinion about that biography because that's what critiquing is. It's giving our opinion. And so we're going to think about the contribution made by the famous person and the obstacles that they overcame. And we're really going to give our opinion about whether we think that that famous person's achievements are significant. And we're going to notice the attitude of the writer towards that famous person. Um, has the biographer included warts and all information um, or, you know, is the biographer completely so in favour of the famous person that they leave out some of the stuff that's a little bit dodgy? So you've got to have a big think and give your opinion. So when you've been looking at a novel, these are the kinds of things that you might want to notice and give your opinions about. I'll just leave them there for you to consider and come back to later because these are some important things to consider and to give your opinion about after reading a novel. We can also look at the illustrations um, and we can ask ourselves whether they support, add to or contradict the written text. And there's really three aspects of visual literacy that we want to consider when we look at an image. Uh, what's happening in the image, what stands out in the image, and how does it make us feel? There's a really good uh, PowerPoint that I've linked to here that I strongly suggest you might want to look at later because actually um, it's, it's fantastic in terms of explaining visual literacy um, in more detail. So that PowerPoint by uh, Donna Lowe, I, I strongly suggest that you might want to take a little bit of a look at it. So let's look at the first thing. What is happening here? So you can take a look at the W's in the image and you can give your opinion about any stereotypes or symbols that you see. Um, any any characters that are given a large size in, in relation to other characters. And I suggest that you go to this visual literacy site that's listed here and discuss the questions related to example two, because they'll really get you into the headset of, um, of what's going on with visual literacy and giving your opinion about pictures. The second aspect is to consider how the illustrator has composed the image. What stands out, you know, what, what, what do you notice first on the page, which is called salience? How is your eye drawn from one point to another across the image, which we call the reading pass? And we notice whether there are any frames around the image or whether it's a double page spread. So um, the composition of an image is something we can give our opinion on as well. And another aspect about an image is how it makes us feel. And uh, there are some elements here that are listed, such as social distance, shot angles, colour, lighting and modality. 
and you can learn a lot from the Donna Lowe PowerPoint so that when you give opinions about images, um, you, you can give your reasons for why um, you feel that way. Now, there are some really good critique tools that we all know about so that we can give our opinion. So I think opinion speeches are really fantastic. Um, it's just very important whenever you state your opinion, of course, to provide reasons and to include evidence for your opinion. So critique tool number two here is um, the book talk or the book review, the film review. And this is when you can give an opinion about something you've just read or viewed. Um, feel really comfortable to dislike it as well. But always when you're critiquing, you give your reasons for your opinion. Critique tool number three is red light, yellow light. And this is when you're reading a text that is supposedly factual. Um, and you're, if you come across something and you think, you know, I seriously doubt that, you call it a red light. And if you cross, uh, come across something that is not quite so um, sketchy, um, you call it a yellow light. So make a note of them and you can cross check that information because you're just thinking that the author may not be entirely um, objective. Circle of viewpoints is another critique tool that's fantastic um, and it gets you to think in the actual viewpoint of a particular stakeholder um, and then you know people actually people share the circle of viewpoints so that you actually get to understand um, how something is for for people coming from different perspectives it's a really good tool now this is for teachers actually this slide because there are so many fantastic thinking routines that assist people to critique really well and um, I would strongly suggest any teachers viewing this to explore these thinking tools because they really assist with critiquing.